needs condition. Okay. And it, it was both physical and emotional. Okay. So he needed to have, they, they needed to have somebody that was going to be able to, uh, to look after him and, and uh, see to it that his assets were managed, but also looking after his care and so forth. Right. And between, once we heard this, we then we took it over to where we understood really a lot more of the financial issues, the tax issues. And in this case, we needed to also understand what the state of California issues were. Yeah. And then we needed to then make sure we went to the attorney to where we put the right legal documents in place to where Lenny would have the income for the rest of his life in this particular case but never actually owned or controlled the assets. So he, if you would, he had income for the rest of his life, but then the, the, the money itself was retained and it was sent back to his brother and sisters once he passed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is Lenny still around? No, he's not, oh. unfortunately. <laughs> okay. But he, he, he was definitely the joy of her life. Uh-huh, well, that's great. Uh, do you have maybe another example? Or? Sure, uh, an, an, another example of, of what not to do, and, and it was what happens whenever a family dies intestate. Mm. And uh, this was uh, a family that, uh, the, that was intestate in 1976. It's a long time ago. Long time ago. And the lawsuits continued until the year 2001. Oh my gosh. And so this is an example of working now with a family that did have problems and continued to have problems for many years afterwards. And how do you deal with the family whenever there's differing, uh, differing uh, people looking to have differing results that will uh, affect one side of the family or another more or less than the other one? It's a wonderful case study in what not to do. Mm -hmm. And yet on the other side, I had another family that took that and it went just totally the opposite way, is the brother and sister were able to work together. Mm -hmm. They were coming up and the brother managed the family business. The sister who was not active in the business uh, dealt with the uh, issues outside and the family set up uh, some philanthropy uh, uh, constitutions and she ran those issues and then the brother continued to build it uh, unfortunately it's gone to the next generation now but the next generation now has the entire platform to be able to work with the five children and I doubt if they'll ever go without a will or a trust again but this is what you end up having to work with yeah so a big part of all of this is um, is getting families talking about these issues and money in many cases have been sort of a forbidden subject uh, in the family context and in fact I even heard a story uh, years ago um, during the depression uh, so of course the news and the newspaper was terrible and so uh, Nelson, uh, back then, was a young man in university, and he went to his father and he said, uh, gee, Dad, should I quit school and go to work, uh, you know, and get a job? And, and he said, no, son, I don't think you need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but even in that context, they may not have talked that much because the sons didn't really know uh, at that time uh, that much about what was going on in the family business. And so if it is the case with a family like the Rockefellers, uh, we can imagine how it is with most other fa families, including my own. So anyway, uh, so I would think that would be an important part of this whole uh, thing that we're talking about. That is absolutely right. Uh, in fact, uh, we're working on a piece uh, that will be uh, coming out in January, which is how do you help educate your children? regarding managing money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gone out and I've identified more than 15 websites that you can go through and you can look at. And some of them are even designed for teachers to help build a curriculum 
<coughs> excuse me, uh, a curriculum to be able to teach classes. So it is to help bring up the education. And then many times, much as you've described, mm -hmm. parents do not quite know how to t discuss financial issues with their children. I have sit around the table and just saying, well, you are going to be uh, inheriting some money and let's start having these discussions now so you'll know how to manage this money when you do get control of it. And then usually simultaneously, I'm having discussions with the parents that says, well, why don't we help the children while they're younger learn how to manage money properly mm -hmm. now versus waiting for them to all get the money. And then all of a sudden, oh, I've got all this money and now I'll see how fast I can spend it. One of the most interesting studies was a study I saw seven years ago. The average inheritance has been lost or spent within 18 months of receiving the inheritance. It's just like the people who win the lottery. <clears throat> that is, that is absolutely, and it will not buy happiness. Yeah, right. It will not buy happiness. The, the strangest one, it was not my client, was hearing about a young lady whose parents had both died and she had inherited a couple million dollars, not an insignificant amount. And in the end of 12 months, she was flying her girlfriends all to New York on a spending spree, oh my gosh. paying for everything as she runs out of money. Oh, what a shame. What a shame and a loss for what that opportunity that person would have had should she have had some education and training as she was growing up. Right. So one of the resources that I'll point out uh, for people's financial education is past episodes of this show. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Which you can find at financialinsiderweekly.com. Just under, look under past episodes. There's, there's a great financial uh, education that I'm accumulating for people here, including now we've got this wonderful uh, interview with Dick. So, uh, Dick, we're getting to the point where we have to wind down. So, um, I, you know, I admire the work that you're doing, and congratulations on getting this thing going. And uh, emotionally, it has to be very rewarding. I know that it's, it's tough getting things going, especially during a, a, a recession-type time, and, you know, people are even more shy sometimes or reticent about uh, doing uh, stuff like this and, and getting things going. But, uh, you know, I, I have to believe in the long run you're going to be very successful because, well, one, because I know you've already got a great book of clients, and the second, because uh, just knowing you as an individual, you know, I know that you can do it. So, um, anyway, I want to thank you again for being here as a guest on my show, and I hope that uh, we'll have another opportunity to maybe talk about these issues again. I'm looking forward to it, Michael. Thank you. Okay. And we'll see you next time on Financial Insider Weekly.